Welcome to this short teaching video on Stuart Beer's setting of the text, Save Us O Lord. My name is Tansy Castledine and I'm delighted to share a few ideas with you in relation to preparing this piece with your choir. The text, Save Us O Lord, is a short sentence recited at the service of Compline. Compline derives its name from the Latin completorium, meaning completion, and so the service of Compline is the final formal service of prayer in the day before you complete your day and go to bed. So it's a service of reflection, of quiet and stillness, and this should be borne in mind when you're thinking about your performance. Always have the aim of a cantabile and singing style, a legato, a smooth and connected style when you're singing this piece. The COVID-19 pandemic has required musicians of all backgrounds and skills to be creative and this particular setting of Save O Lord has been written specifically during this time for working with choirs both in person and also in the context of online learning and performance too. The anthem is a single line piece which is canonic in nature meaning it then can be layered um, over itself potentially resulting in a piece of up to four parts making it very flexible and particularly helpful under our current uh, circumstances. As part of your preparations be sure to sing through all of the vocal lines and play the accompaniment too if that's something that you feel comfortable doing and there are learning tracks also available from the RSCM too and this preparation in advance of working with your choir will enable you as the choir leader to know the music inside out and importantly also foresee any challenges that your singers might encounter and give you the time to consider how you might deal with those. So Let's think about some of the aspects that we consider when we're helping bring a choir together to achieve a performance, whether that's online or in a rehearsal or service uh, um, in person. Some of the key issues that you might want to think about are the corporate sound, so the way all of the uh, choir members sound when they're put together, the breathing in relation to the punctuation, the dynamics, the diction, the rhythm, the ensemble, and of course, things like your conducting of the piece as well. So let's begin with looking at part one. Before the two bar intro introduction, you need to give a clear sense of the tempo that you'd like. So make sure you're thinking of the speed of the music and thinking through the shapes of the music before you begin. Your accompanist will then join in and of course you then need to gesture to your choir and invite them to sing. So let's practice that. So our three beat and a bar pattern, making sure that the bottom of the beat is connected to your choir's breathing apparatus. And let's imagine your accompanist is joining in now. Invite the choir to sing, and here we go, and save. And there we are, your choir's in. Let's practice that again. So giving your three beats and a bar, so you've got lots of clarity, so everyone knows the tempo. Your accompanist has just begun. Invite the choir, and save. And then we're off, ready for the first vocal part. Keep the tone quality even throughout the dynamics in this first part. We have some crescendos and just be careful to avoid over bulging in the shorter one in that first two bar phrase. Remember that dynamics are always to be within the wider context of the style of the piece. Practice your conducting of the crescendos, a smaller one perhaps, and then a bigger one so that you really get used to how that physically feels for you. Aim for your musical shape to reflect the text. So use the W of waking to show the culmination of that second longer crescendo. Notice that there's a comma marked after the word us in bar eight. That allows your time, allows time for your choir to breathe, um, but give them plenty of space so that it doesn't feel snatched. Um, perhaps avoid thinking about the phrase cut off um, and instead think of, ring, uh, think of a release like your choir would do when they're singing. So let's think about that first phrase then and as we sing or play or you're conducting at home think about giving a clear three beat and a bar beat your dynamics and making room for your choir to release. It should uh, be noted I'm going to sing along in these demonstrations but I wouldn't recommend you sing with your choir. I would leave that to them so that your ears are free to listen and understand how well they're doing and what things you might want to adjust. So let's practice that first phrase. <laughs> Here's our beat. Our accompanist has just begun. Invite the choir. Save us. Bigger crescendo here. Save, release. And then 
once you're happy with that, we move on to part two. Let's think about some diction things here. There are a couple of things we can bear in mind. We have the words and guard, and we have two powerful sounds there, the D of and and the G of guard. We have to make sure they're both audible and clear, but don't overdo them as we want to keep smooth too. Give plenty of care to the word awake. Bring this out a little bit to highlight the opposite of sleeping, but again, be careful not to overemphasize. Remember, everything has to happen in context. Avoid an overemphasis on the end of the melisma on the word sleeping. So that's where you have um, one syllable, but with many notes. And then finally, keep the crotchets legato and with direction. Notice that that descending final phrase has a little crescendo um, and that just helps uh, counteract the sense of the falling shape and draws towards the word watch as we begin part three. So let's have a think through then all of part two, thinking about the diction the line and the even tone and the dynamics in context. And again, remember, I'm only singing for now. Don't sing with your choir. Let's look at part two. And God was watch. And we arrive at part three. So let's think about here the K on the word Christ. Again, thinking about some diction, it needs to have sound, but don't be over energetic there. The first setting of the word Christ is for three counts. So it will last for all three counts and releases on the four. So practice showing that to your choir. So it's a good chance also there to use your left hand if using your left hand when conducting is a bit new to you. Show the beat in the right hand and then we'll show the line of the three in the left and the release. So let's practice. One, two, three, release. Christ. And notice that the next setting of the word Christ is six beats long, which means it will release on the seventh. Christ. Let's practice that again. Christ. And again, the ST nice and gently within the span of the mood we're trying to create. Lastly, pay plenty of attention to the whole tones in bars 22 and 23, the melodic version of the minor scale. Here we go with the B natural and the C sharp. So G to A to B natural to C sharp. So uh, whole tones in a row there. Um, this might be a good moment if you're someone who's doing theory with their choir and trying to build that into your sessions. It's a great way of um, thinking about theory in action. Sometimes theory can feel a little dry, but there's a wonderful way perhaps here to put in a little oral test. So here's how the melody should sound. May watch with Christ. And that's the melodic, but listen to the difference just for interest and oral awareness of the harmonic. The, the harmonic makes that C sharp feel rather different. Um, so that can be a fun exploration there. Um, sometimes it's good to divert a little um, before you're uh, coming back to the actual final version of something. And lastly, just allow the choir time to relax into that bottom G rather than making it happen. Um, for me, it just feels a little bit low. Um, we'll talk a little bit about key later, but that might be a giveaway to me that I might consider um, perhaps changing the key depending on the group that I'm doing with this, remembering that tailoring things to the people who are in front of you um, is the way to get maximum success there. Looking into bar uh, to part four then, uh, be sure to practice bar 27. Keep an even tone in the arpeggio shape which should feel rhythmic but not overly assertive. Dotted rhythms do need to have internal life and accuracy but within the span of the mood being set. Notice this one is leading to the word sleep, which is given prominence because it's actually the highest note in the phrase. So naturally it will feel louder anyway. So balance that and your crescendo. Practice the C sharp in bar 26 and then the C natural in bar 28. And sleep. So practice that one into the voice and then the next one. So you could do those as two little fragments with your choir. Remember, you don't always have to sing whole lines. You could just focus on those two little moments. And then finally, in part four, you'll want to think about whether you breathe in bar 34 or not. 
and that will depend potentially on the singers that you have in front of you. It's not an overly long phrase, but with a writ to a getting slower, it does need to be carefully handled. And actually, you can make either version work. So you could take a breath, but equally you might not want to. recommend if conducting particularly is a little bit new to you practice conducting that writ and the pause at the end so you feel really confident in your gesture remember to be standing nice and tall keep the beat connected to your breathing mechanism of your singer um, and again the writ is another good place to start bringing in your left hand if that's new to you let's just practice that ending then we may rest And you might either want to show the continuation of the sound and then bring your choir off, or you might want to show the diminuendo keeping on going and then the off in your other hand. To be honest, whatever you do, so long as you've practiced it um, and it makes sense, your choir will be able to follow. And remember, when you are practicing your conducting, practicing in front of the mirror is a great thing. And if you're practicing your singing, recording yourself and listening back is also a great thing. Have one or two just very last thoughts that you might want to consider in the preparation of the piece. Think about the accompaniment. If you're going to do this with piano, I'd recommend some uh, sustain pedal. This is without. But with. Can make quite a difference. If you're going to use the organ, think about a solo stop in that lovely right hand melody. With an accompaniment on this undulating quaver phrase and perhaps some pedal, 16 foot pedal in the bottom, just to give a bit of depth. Equally, you might want to try the piece unaccompanied. You could try it both ways with your choir, and you might even have, I don't know, perhaps a violinist or something, and you'd like to include a violin in one of the melodic lines instead of a singer. It's deliberately written this piece with flexibility in mind. Finally, you might want to consider the pitch of the piece. Um, remember when you're planning with the choir that's in front of you, you might want to move it perhaps up or down or tone. Um, and again, you'll need to find a best fit here because every choir is different. So I wish you all great joy in exploring this piece. It's a fabulous example of a canon and such an important addition to our repertoire at this time. So thank you, Stuart and the RSCM. And I wish everyone a really happy and joyful experience exploring and performing Save Us O Lord with your choirs. <laughs>